Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Eric and today I'm going to be showing you guys both to go Saturn's MC330G G beam for great. This is actually an inflatable catamaran. Now I personally own a dinghy and a Kubota, the uh, CK380 which I have right here, my SK285 XLs over there. I'm gonna be using them for comparison. I have never in my life even tried or even thought about trying a catamaran which is basically uh, two big bladders on the sides, uh, the floor usually rides above the water. It is a completely different concept when it comes to inflatables and the ones that I am used to. And a big thanks for you guys in specific, because the moment both to go confirmed they will be sending me this for me to try out for the next two or three weeks, when I made the announcement, a lot of you voice out your uh, some of your questions and some of your opinions and experiences with these. Some people like them a lot, some people are curious why a catamaran and not a dinghy or kaboot. I'm gonna go over those scenarios the best way that I can. Next week I'll be taking it to the water to try it out. So without any further ado, let me take it off the cart. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started here. Put it up. And in all classic fashion of Saturn, we have here the aluminum pouch. These are so handy and useful. You have no idea. Never skimp on putting the paddles on your inflatable boats. Even though if you feel curious, oh, I want to save some weight. I don't want to carry carry them with you. It's just you'll be glad you did. So we got the aluminum paddles right there. We got the registration papers. This is very handy. If you want to keep this with you. Want to? Oh, I know some of you live in certain places where you don't need to register. You actually have to register the boat, the motor. Some of you have told me that. Depending on the scenario, this is handy to have nonetheless. We got. The repair package on patches, the uh, tool that removes the uh, the valves, an extra valve as well. We got here the high pressure hand pump. I personally own an electric one that I'm gonna be using for the demonstration. For those of you who plan to use an inflatable boat the way I do it, whether I where I inflate and deflate on every scenario, I highly recommend uh, an electric um, inflatable pump. It's just, it'll make your life easier. So we have here very large, <laughs> very large seats. I'll be right back. Let me get the ones for my Kaboot, for my dinghy. I want to show you some comparison. All right, so here's my aluminum seat for my CK280 dinghy. <laughs> here's the one for the MC330. A lot larger. <laughs> all right, let me, I just want to show you guys that for context sake. That's all it was. I apologize for the airport. Unfortunately, I have an airport airport nearby. So we have here the inflatable itself. Okay, here we go. Woo! This thing is heavy for sure. Oh wow! Here we go. Ah. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap it. Unravel it. What it's all about. Okay, so I've got you guys right now on wide angle on the camera so you can see more information. I managed to get it out of the protecting casing and the wrapping. So let me go ahead and. Okay, which part is the front? Oh, this part is the front, so I'm going go like this. Again, it's my first time ever even, you know, handling a Katamaran in my life. I think it's interesting. And I want to get it. I give a special thanks to the guys that both to go because they were kind enough to furnish this for me to try. And at the same time, it gives me the experience to learn about them. So whenever you decide to purchase a boat, you have an idea of which one do you want, what kind, and what you want to use it for. That's the reason of these videos, really. I, I thoroughly enjoy this hobby of mine a lot. I enjoy this hobby quite a bit. And I want others to experience the same thing. That's literally it. This hobby is just a lot of fun. And it doesn't break the bank. You don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars for, to get a boat. You know, there was one time I was camping at Spoy Island SL8 on the Indian River. And I took my CK380 with me that day. A guy on a bigger boat, guy who looks like, you know, man of means, he was looking at my boat saying, you know, I'm being considered selling my boat and just get one of these. Because all he does is spend time around the bay, intercoastal waterways. You don't need something so big to waste so much money on gas. 
Get yourself an inflatable and have a great time. Go camping on the little islands. I mean, yeah. Anyway, let me shut up. Let me continue. So, let's see what we got here. So we have, so the inflatable floor appears to be already in place. This one basically is composed of two huge bladders on each side. The inflatable uh, floor. Each bladder has two chambers. I'm gonna go over the technicalities in a second. You know, measurements and all that. So what I'm gonna do right now is basically inflate. I'm gonna put it on fast forward so you guys can see everything you know being put together. We get busy. Okay, so um, I was having some issues with my electric pump. My good old faithful has been with me so for so many years. I have been flooded and deflated hundreds of times and it's finally died. So I had to finish up the floor with the hand pump. It wasn't that bad actually. It took me like three minutes actually. That's not too bad. Hey, anyway, so now that the entire boat is set up, I have to get me myself. I have to get myself another one of those. I mean, it was. It lasted long enough. One thing, logically speaking. First, let me show you something. What? Let me. Thing over here. This is the reason I got my dinghy out. This dinghy has bladders all around, right? And the floor kind of sets itself on the corners, and it, it creates a stable scenario, right? This one has an open boat. See. So the floor, it is imperative that you inflate to its maximum PSI of 10 PSI, because it's very important. Thankfully, however, very tough and hard. I mean, let me show you guys something real quick. You know what I mean? Quite tough. I like it. Make sure I don't bust my butt. Very tough. Hulk smash. Yeah. So yeah, quite tough. Very important that you inflate to the right PSI. Because I am noticing, like I mentioned, like unlike my dinghy, that everything is covered. This one relies on the PSI of the floor. And this little notch is here in the floor as well to keep the floor in place. Check it out. Because I know a lot of you are wondering, what is the difference between this and a dinghy? You see those? They have to align properly. I like it though, it's, uh, it's interesting. Now we get to the meat and potatoes of the video. The question is, why a dinghy? Why, um, what, what, uh, why not one of these? Why not a, uh, a pontoon? Why not a dinghy? Why not one of our two boats? Why not one of those? That one is a flat bottom. This one has a, uh, a bottom with a keel. This one, however, has neither one of those. Let me see if I can actually turn this around. I'm not making a mess. You guys see this floor? You see where the bladders do not align with the floor? The floor is actually above the water. Which means that the only parts of the boat, for the most part, that's gonna be touching the water will be the bladders themselves. Which means you have to contend with far less water, far less friction, and you can get into plane and go quicker with less power. For instance, this thing is ready for a 10 horsepower outboard, one that's actually, uh, uh, 100 pounds or so. 
you'll be just fine with a 10 horsepower outboard in this. In fact, I bet you money that when I take it to the lake and I'm running it with my 6 horsepower to Hatsu, it'll catch plane just fine. Because I don't have to contend with the water as much. Now, the feel of it, what it feels like on the water, I have zero clue. I'm gonna be finding out next week, Lord willing, when I take it into the water. And to give you guys some context, let me go ahead and flip my other two boats so you see what I'm talking about. You see there's like a space. Let me move the camera. I'm sorry if I'm droning on. It's just that I'm still learning a lot about this and I'm fascinated by it. You see that? You see that opening? Like that? Where the bladders protrude and just touch the water and the floor barely does? That's what creates that ability to go fast. Okay, first I'm gonna look at my SK-285. This is the flat bottom kibbutz, see? The floor is aligned with the bladders. Maybe not by much, but it's just, it's flat. It's completely flat. Then, here's a standard dinghy with a keel. And there's a lot more floor touching the water. But not on this. Not on this at all. There is another benefit of having one of these that one of you viewers told me. Let me flip it around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this tip comes from one of my viewers. He even shared some of his pictures, the one he owns. He owns one that is yellow. I was kind of jealous. Because the color that he has, the yellow one. Let's see if I can put a big picture, if I can find it. I'll show you here, you guys. I was kind of jealous because it looked nice and yellow and red. Anyway, I digress. He explained to me that it is very easy to get into the boat if you're going deep sea fishing or you're taking a swim and you're talking in somewhere and uh, he basically just goes like this, pulls himself in and then gets in the boat, which makes it fairly easy. Now mind you, if you happen to have a dinghy and you want to be able to get in, you can get yourself one of these little nylon strap uh, little stairs, yeah, they usually clip on with B-rings another option if you don't have one of these you know or you don't want to splash any water inside you can use one of these hold the ladder reach in take it out and then you can climb back up that's one option so that's one of the benefits but however there are some alternatives that's what i want to let you know about however that's pretty neat when you're in a rush when you're quick coming out of the water you want to jump in whoop you do it <laughs> Okay, so I went ahead and put in the seats and the paddles, and we're gonna take a closer look at it. I already showed you guys that it is tough. So will the benefits of having a pontoon. It's very pretty, very wide, a lot of space. I'm gonna go over the technicalities in a second. I'm gonna put the uh, pontoon against the wall of the house so you guys can see a different perspective. Quite nice. All right. I like it. I like the aesthetic. I see why people like this. I do. I think I understand it. <laughs> All right. The time has come to go over some technicalities. Let me grab my pointing noodle. Now, this thing has one thing going for it. And in my personal opinion, will be presence. This thing is large. All right. This thing is wide. I mean, it's massive. I don't know how else to describe it. It's huge. <laughs> you know what I like about this being so big? It just makes you feel secure when you're in the water. Now, mind you, sure, when you're taking out some big swells, you might get some water from the front because you don't have no bow. But because it is so large, you like you don't have to worry about that. It's, it's just impressive. That's all. My personal opinion. Anyway. Let's talk about technicalities from back to top. We got 11 feet. The inside length of the boat, I mean from here to here, not from bladders, but from here to here, you got 8.4 feet. Total width from here to here, you got 6.8 feet. That's quite big. The two diameters, they're as big as my SK-285 XL, 20 inch diameter. That is some big, big bladders. I'm sorry to get the picture of what this thing is about. It's all about size. <laughs> it's huge. So we got five chambers on this for added security. You got one here, 
here, one here, one here, and the floor itself. The, the people capacity, you can fit up to four people comfortably, four people. You likely will be sitting on the bladders instead of the aluminum seats. And uh, maximum capacity of weight, you, stuff you can carry, like let's say you scuba dive and you got, you got the tanks, you got the gear and all that, you know, deep sea fishing stuff, up to 1,200 pounds, which is pretty, pretty generous. The max engine, as I mentioned earlier, you can put in here, it is a 10 horsepower or a hot, 100 120 uh, uh, pounds of, uh, uh, of a motor you can go bigger if you want to but it's not necessary technically it is not necessary because of the pontoon design you need far less power in order to get moving and going into plane all right so this thing I, I cannot wait to take it to the water I think it's going to be quite interesting it'll be a brand new experience for myself and I will share that with you guys again like as I said, mentioned I'm quite familiar with the almost the entire lineup of supposed to go I have owned several <laughs> and yeah this is the video unboxing setting up of the MC 330 G G for gray uh, pun to both on Saturday supposed to go I will pull a link below for the supposed to go website if you guys be so kind to use that uh, that link it'll help me it lets them know that I'm getting traffic and uh, it helps me make it make more videos they send more boats i get to try it out you guys get better informed and you guys can make um more close to what i'm looking for intellectual purchases ideally my goal is in this hobby whoever watches these videos and they want to buy a boat whether it be boats to go or whatever is that you want and done you watch the videos you realize okay this is the one i want and need you get one you enjoy it for many years and you have a great time anyway guys Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.